Hey guys, welcome along. Thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> if you're not already subscribed, please remember to subscribe. Uh, I hope you like what you see. There's lots and lots of stuff on my channel in a very short space of time. Um, I have a confession to make. I've started another kit. Yes, I have started another kit and I've kept it very, very quiet because I know that some of you get annoyed that I don't finish anything. Um, I'm afraid that's a life trait of mine. So, um, but what I've done, I've started another kit because I've been working on this, as you well know, the Smart 4 tank. And this is now started into part 14. Part 13 went up today. Uh, the tracks have now done one side here. And I'm 20 odd links into the other side so really light at the end of the tunnel now once those tracks are all done I can get them painted um, glue out the bits that need sort of flattening out whatever but more of that later the reason I'm putting this together now these few words is because I want to tell you that I've started another kit um, it's a beautiful kit it's a lovely lovely little kit and you really should get yourself one if you have any interest in more one whatsoever um, I was going to do one video, beginning to end, out of the box, right from start to finish. The trouble is, it's going to probably be an hour, hour and a half long. And as you know, if you do YouTube videos, that would probably take about 17 days to upload. So I've decided to keep it around about the sort of 30, 40 minute segment, if I can, um, which I think this is. So... Yeah, please watch this, please enjoy. Right here, right now, the model is almost finished. And I'd also like to say, if you want to know how to paint wood, wooden planks, um, I think this is a pretty good tutorial and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, it's fairly simple and quite effective. And I also tell you how to take it further if you want to go to varnishing and, you know, stuff like that for ships and stuff. So, um, yeah. Enjoy this video. Don't think I'm starting this as another kit. It's not going to get finished. It will be finished. In fact, it's almost finished. And it may well be finished before the Mark IV tank is. I'm hoping to get them done at the same time. So, um, worst case. So, yeah, enjoy. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Um, before we go any further, please remember to like and subscribe if you like what you see. If you don't like what you see, hit the dislike button. But please tell me what you dislike. And uh, as usual, always open for um, comments and suggestions on how to improve and change things. So if there's something you like or don't like, let me know. Um, right now we're going to start on a, uh, a build review of this lovely little ICM kit, this ambulance, which I've already done an inbox review for. So if you look back on my channel, then you'll, um, you'll see the inbox review for this one. Um, at the same time, I did an inbox review for the Copper State Models. Um, Lanchester armoured car which is a gorgeous little kit as well um, this kit has a lot of parts you don't use which you'll see in a moment in the instructions and probably has enough parts to end up making another rear end of another ambulance if you want I also did wonder if um, I need to see the other kit but there is another ambulance which I think is an English version of something I don't know it's, it's a different version of the of the same thing maybe it's the maybe it's the late um, but I think the kit, the parts for that kit are actually in here, or at least most of them are. So, uh, yeah, you could make either from this kit, I sh I'm sure. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's have a quick look at where we are. Um, so you've seen the box top now. It's lovely and extremely glossy, and the light loves it. Uh, front of the instructions is also extremely glossy, and the light loves it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so as I said uh, just now and in my review, there's a lot of parts here. There's like the um, the sides, the rear, there's the cab front. There's a lot of stuff you don't use. And um, I've actually cut all that off the sprues now. And here it is. Here's all the parts that you don't use. We get the light back over here now that we don't have reflection, reflection problems. So um, yeah, these are all the parts you don't use. So uh, yeah, enough there to make a cab. And as I said before, you could probably make that up and turn it into a chicken shed for a farm or something, which is what they used to do. So, um, yeah, so moving into the instructions, uh, you start off with the engine construction, which is 
you know, for its size, it's pretty well detailed. Um, I can't see there's a distributor or anything unless this is it. But uh, anyway, I, th I think that might be an oil filter. Well, I'll, I'll have a look at my references and um, I also need to check out their colour guides because they, they've called up the colours here for certain individual parts but then nothing for the actual engine itself. Um, this is a little bit tricky. Um, it, it's a little bit uh, vague, the fitting of the radiator to the chassis. The chassis is extremely floppy uh, because it's to scale. It's very, very flexible, which is a good thing, I think, for getting your wheels, um, all four wheels on the ground. So, yeah, I, I put that in and then sort of just held it in place on some blocks with a block holding the radiator square just to make sure the radiator is dead vertical. Um, then we've got the fuel tank here going together, rear axle going together, exhaust, you have to draw the end of the exhaust because um, it's not done. And then fitting the rear axle and then we move on with more of the suspension parts. Um, I've got this far with it. So here's where I am, to, where I am now. Um, engine is just loosely fitted, it's not glued in. If you remember I said about the radiator being quite vague, it's, um, it's just these two points here where it fits into the front of the chassis uh, and there's no real, it's like, it's like it's just a shelf, it just sits on a, a shelf moulded into the radiator. There's a, a quite a nasty um, seam right around the radiator which needs to be removed as well. Um, I would suggest dry fitting the engine into the chassis before you fit these water hoses. They're depicted in instructions here and here because the the one on the side there has to fit into a hole in the bottom of the radiator. The one on the top goes up underneath and just sits in line with that bulge. So um, yeah, I'd suggest doing that. I also fitted the engine before I fitted the rear axle just to make sure I got it in the correct position and the prop shaft would fit. Um, now that this is done and dry, I need to get this on some blocks and check that all four axles, at the, all four um, wheel pivots are at the same height because I don't want it to be sat you know, on three wheels or anything. So, um, yeah, I guess the next thing now is to, is to paint the engine up, paint this area of the chassis and then, and then get that in um, and do the, uh, the, the rest of the suspension points. So I'll get on with that um, and I'll be back in a second. Right, so I've got 14 and 15 done now. Um, the, I've also fitted the exhaust and the, um, and the fuel tank. Uh, this section here is, there's a couple of notes, all this is very, very fine and very, very beautifully detailed. And also there's something I want to show you guys to help you out if you're building this kit. When it comes to putting the axle onto the different prop shaft, if you look here you can see a tiny little line there. Um, and then again you can see it here, there's a tiny little line. Well that line is a scallop to fit these parts into B2 and B46. And uh, when I did mine, I got it backwards. So you can see here, if I can get it in the light, it's, it's very, very small. There's the scallop there in the back of the, uh, the hub. And I've had to just glue these straight onto the face because my axle's in backwards. So um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's not the end of the world, but you know, why don't you learn from my mistakes? That's the, that's the best way, that's what these videos are for. And you can see that all these suspension components, the steering arms, they're, they're all so very, very beautiful to scale. But they've also managed, by keeping these axles as a one-piece item, they've also managed to keep the rigidity in the kit. So, you know, some Bronco kits are absolutely beautiful with the detail and everything around here. But, you know, they'll put like a swivel here that you glue on and there's just no strength in it whatsoever. So, um, yeah, I still haven't glued the engine in. I want to take the engine out and paint it. So uh, yeah, every, everything you're going to see that's attached to the engine is just going to unclip, I hope. I've also fitted the steering box at this point because um, you can see it down here. It tells you to fit it later on, but um, I want to make sure that the steering arm here would actually fit to the, um, to the steering box. So what I've done there is because later on the steering column comes down and will attach to the so what I've done is taken the bulk head off of the sprue and then just eyed it up so to make sure that, that column lines up with the hole in the bulk head. So when the column comes down through it doesn't sort of form a dog leg, it just goes straight onto it. 
so there we have it so um i'm thinking probably next bit is going to be painting maybe add a bit of detail to that engine i don't know we'll see so uh, yeah see you in a minute guys all right guys short little inter interlude here uh, as you can see here in step 19 we're going to glue the bulkhead this is the back of the driver's cab to the um to the floor of the ambulance and you've got the option to have the doors open and show the inside of the ambulance or have it all closed up um, I think I'm going to have the doors open and what I'm going to have to do is fill all the ejector pin marks. There's ejector pin marks all over the inside of the, um, of the actual ambulance. You can see them on here as well, on the inside of the body. So um, they're all going to have to be filled just in case I decide. But also you'll notice this floor, it's, um, it's planked. In fact, the whole rear body is, um, is timber. So we've got the... The lovely detail on here we've got the planks and we've got the uh the bolts or rivets or whatever they were they're probably coach bolts um but there's no wood grain so i want to add some wood grain to this just to give it that you know that extra little touch so what i'm going to use is a saw um and when we look at the saw blade we've got on the left here we've got the coarse teeth and on the right we've got the fine this is actually a, a jlc saw uh it's available from small cars I think they're called small cars or little cars. Um, but yeah, they're really, really good blades. I wouldn't recommend anything else. I absolutely love these little things. So um, I've tried lots of them and, and found these to be the best. You've also got this type of saw here, which is from uh, RB Productions, which is um, which is really good. It's a little bit coarser, but this is, this is really good for if you're trying to get into it. Like if I wanted to saw this window open, you know, this won't get in there, but this will. So, um, yeah, but you combination of these, you, you can get the wood grain finish. So if I show you, first of all, on the back of here, because this is the underside, what we're basically looking at doing is just taking the knife, the, the knife, the saw, and just, with very little pressure, just scoring across the surface like that. Then, what we're going to do is move it a little bit sideways as we go forward, and then you can come back on yourself. And what you're after doing is just getting some form of texture on there like that. Now, I don't know if you can pick that up in the light. It's so much easier. The thing is, you won't really see the results of your work until you paint it and then wash it. And the way I would do this is paint it with like a, a light buff colour, Tamiya, uh, and then give it a couple of days to dry and then wash it with some oil. Um, just brush some oil into it and then sort of wipe it off with some thinners and it will leave the darker stuff in the wood grain. And then what you can do is clear coat it, paint it grey, um, or, or clear coat it, hairspray it, paint it grey and then rub the rub the hairspray off if you want to, to show areas of rub. Like if, if this area here says where the, the driver's head is always hitting or his, head, his hat always hits there, you know just rub a little bit away and underneath you'll have wood grain so um and even if you don't do the hairspray thing you'll still have the wood grain underneath the gray paint so here we go then um i'm hoping we don't lose too much of this bolt detail but i can uh, i can but try so the main thing is is to not sort of start here and go across we need to go right across so what i'm going to do is just first of all just like this straight not too worried about the bottom here because that's hidden by the uh, by the seat mount. So just and, uh, and there we go. It's it's that simple. And I don't know if you can see that in the light. Let's try and get it. But you can probably see in there there is a kind of wood grain effect on the on the plastic which when you add some oils and stuff and some effects then yeah then you can see there's a bit there that needs to be redone so coming from there across and from there across sorry I'm off the camera guys oops so there we go and there's our wood grained part. Just to show you quickly again, do the floor. 
this will be a lot easier because it's in two halves so pushing the saw into the gap and I'm going to start going sideways as well and there you can hopefully see there's the smooth plastic there's the wood grain Should have done that I've actually made a mess of that center partition so there we go just to show you quickly if you use a coarser blade you will obviously get a, a deeper wood grain which actually looks okay As I say, you just do this. I've, I've you won't you won't see the effects of this until you actually put your uh, clear coat on. I want to make sure that you get all the areas, all the corners, and everything. Miss that bit there. And there we go all wood grained and done okay right so um here we are a little bit of a different angle well very different angle to be honest but i thought i'd um just do this to uh to show you what's going on um gone through quite a few stages on the instructions now and as you can see the the wheels are um fitted onto the chassis the engine is in there but just placed in place and the bodywork is all on and I don't know if you can see it there I'd probably just pick it out I've got the wood grain on the outside as well um, maybe a little over scale I don't know but by the time it's all painted and everything and then clear coated and hair sprayed you probably hardly see any of the wood grain but it does help with adding the um, certainly in my opinion it helps with adding the, the wood grain finish to it um, I don't know how I'm going to go about it, but I, I think I want to show some wood grain coming through. I don't know if I can do this as a bit of a, a worn out sort of, you know, ambulance that's seen a bit of life. Or, um, I don't know, maybe the paint didn't take too good to the wood and they had some heavy downpours. I don't know. But, I, I you know, I, it, it, I, even if it's a what if, I don't know. I just I just like to show some of the wood. I, I enjoy doing the, um, the wood effect. And it's nice to show vehicles that are made of wood because these days everything's sort of composite and aluminium and God knows what. And it'd be nice to show some of the good old fashioned wood. So, um, yeah, it's all just basically loosely put together. So, you know, I can take the roof off here and you can see there's some uh, wood grain on the inside of there. And um, and also some of the, um, the ejector pin marks, as tiny as they are, they're filled up with Mr. Surfacer. And then you can take the side off the body here. And we can see the inside we've got the uh, the rack there for the uh, stretchers and there's a seat there in the folded up position and we've got the other side and on this side there's the same rack but we've got the um sorry about the state of my nails guys i just finished work i'm, I'm an engineer with the oil and crap all day so but so uh, no seat down there in the um in the down position so all the interior of this has got to be white so um yeah, I'm gonna have some fun with this. I think, see what happens. And then we've got the uh, the floor and bulkhead assembly now glued together. You can see I've done all the ejector pin marks on there. And again, if I can get it, then you'll see the wood grain in the floor there. And there's also wood grain underneath. If I can catch it in the light, you'll see wood grain underneath. Um, I'm not gonna bother adding plank and detail underneath. Although I might, it's only a few scribes in there, it might be quite easy. Um, this is the cab now, that the seat, cab floor, pedals go in these three holes. Um, something else goes in, I guess, is the handbrake. And then you've got the uh, the wood effect on there. If I can catch that in the light. And there we go. So, um, well, what's that all about? I've just got some flashing. <laughs> that was a bit strange, some flashing in the background. It certainly happened on the camera, it was like over here. Over here there's flashing going on so um yeah 
So all in all, this is a lovely little model. Oh, and the wheels just pop off. But before I take those off, I'm not too sure. Maybe some Model T experts can tell me. These wheels just literally push on like so and sit on sit on like this. But you've got this great big hub sticking out of the centre. And it's the same if you look at the um, the rears. They're the same. So I'm wondering, is that correct or not? I'm not too sure. I've had a look at some references for the engine. And this little thing down here. Um, I've noticed one one of these engines, I think it was a later, like a 1925 engine or something, had a distributor, a distributor cap with the leads coming up. But the earlier ones seemed to have a, um, like an ignition pack with four coils individually going to each spark plug and it would appear this kit has got something like that which is actually fitted into the bulkhead next to the driver's feet so it would appear that the plug leads on this go up into the bulkhead so i'm wondering what this is down here any of you guys have a clue please let me know because um you know if it's not supposed to be there i'll, I'll take it off but uh, i don't know if there's some sort of breather or something or i don't know maybe it's an oil filler cap it's got that sort of look to it but um if I can get it to focus, you'll see what I mean. That that thing there, that thing there, just sitting down in here. So, uh, yeah, so I'll get on with this some more now. Get it sort of uh, all built up what I can, and then um, and then I'll be back. And here we are now with the uh, the wood grain all done and painted. Um, as you can see, it's all in bits again. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to catch this in the light, but you may be able to see the wood grain in there where it's been scratched in with the. See on that bottom plank now, where it's been scratched in with the blade, as I showed you before, and it's now been given a quick coat of. Um, of what colour is it? XF57. I think that's buff, isn't it? Um, so yeah, and then you can see there's an area here where it's a bit heavy. What I need to do there is just very lightly sand that down to take the tops off. All that is is where it's dragged the, the plastic up. So yeah, I need to, um, I think there's a hair in there as well, but look at it. Um, yeah, so I need to just sand that down lightly just to remove the um, the raised plastic and then it'll look like wood again. So um, yeah, there's the other side. You can see in there again, I've got the same thing from the same patch. I've got the, uh, the, um, the raised area and the, the roof. Um, I think the roof would have been white. I've got to do some research because I actually think, looking at it, after when I was painting it, I would imagine this area here, or this cab floor, this would all be um, wood grain as well, planked either across or, or longitudinal, but I imagine it'd be planked across. So if that's the case, I'll have to do that as well. Um, and also looking at the picture of the real thing, if I can get it in here, I think these wheel arches would have been um would have been wood as well certainly this box here so there's a lot more that needs to be wood grained uh, to carry the theme across it's no good having some of the wood grain and some not so um yeah quite a bit of work to go yet guys on this one so um stay tuned and uh i'll see you in a minute okay uh it's been what three seconds since my last little shot where i was talking about the possibility of the bug guards being wood grained and stuff um in reality for me it's about three or four days so um anyway here we are i did realize that the front of the cab was in fact wood grain or wood and it looks like it's um pieces of wood cut to fit around a steel floor here so i've done the wood grain around that steel floor uh also the mud guards here they are they're all now wood grained as well I don't know if you could pick that up there but they are um, I'm not really too bothered about how good the effect here is because at the end of the day this if this was the back of a cargo truck that was going to be left bare wood then the wood graining would be quite important this is just going to be for an effect um, and partly to show you guys how I do this and also it's just for an effect so that if I wear away some paint to reveal the wood, there'll be the odd patch here and there that shows the wood coming through. And also after it's painted, there will be slight, just a slight witness of this wood grain showing. Um, 
looking at images of the real thing, albeit, albeit everything you can see now is probably restored, um, it, it's quite obvious that a lot of it is wood. So, uh, yeah, I want to try and get that across with, with, with this model. It's like yeah, the, it's like this here. Um, this this whole body. This is wood. This is wood. This is wood. The mud guards are wood. The floor here is wood. And everything is wood, other than the steel on the kick boards and the bonnet and the armor area there. So um, I'm trying to convey that in the actual model. Uh, here are the here's one of the side boxes with the wood grain added. Hopefully you can pick that up on the camera. And then you've got um, here's the rear panel. And again, we've got some wood grain on there. Hope you can pick that up. Uh, what else have we got here? Here's the front of the um, the wheel arches. These are like the panels that that go down in front of those wooden boxes there. So they're wood grained as well. So now that basically everything is um, there is the uh, this was quite difficult actually. Um, I've done not very much on this one at all, but this is the rear sort of the rear upper where the, the rear door is there something this is looking at in the back um, so so I've done all the little repairs if you remember I showed you I had some little raised areas here so I've done all them and rubbed and sand and blown them over um, this is basically on here XF59 XF60 whatever so I've got one tone of wood um, now I've done, just to give you a timeline guys, um, at some point, either in the future or in the past, <laughs> um, I have done a Wingnuts Fokker, Wingnut Wings Fokker E4 and I bought an eBay model and it said on the um, eBay description the cockpit floor had been removed and primed, when in fact the cockpit floor had been removed from the sprue, um, primed, and underneath the primer was someone's attempt at wood woodwork and underneath there was about half an inch of white primer and underneath that was a load of scoring where somebody had tried to achieve this wood grain effect I think but with the end of a scalpel that was a right mess so sanded it all back um, covered it with Mr Service and I've got like a fairly smooth finish on there now so I'm doing this one the other way round from what you'd see and also if I'm if I'm doing plywood which is what this would have been um, I don't tend to do this this wood grain I tend to do this only where there's planking or um, you know chunks of, of, of cut wood. Um, plywood tends to be a lot smoother if you look at it in real life. So um, and also I feel with aircraft and it's something else I'm going to be covering. I think some people go a bit overboard with wood graining and stuff, um, especially on plywood. If you look at a sheet of plywood, the wood grain in it is is very very faint, and you come down 30, 30 second scale, you wouldn't really see it. If you look at my um, Fokker triplane build, you'll see where I've done the interior wood panels in there. And I think in 30 second scale, it looks very accurate. Although it doesn't look like the wood grain like they tell you in the Woodnut Wings book, where they add all this, you know, defined wood grain and everything. If you actually look at it in real life, I, I don't know, it's a matter of opinion. It's very, very clever. Some people achieve an amazing effect, but I'm not sure if it's correct for 30 second scale, but that's just my opinion. What do I, do, what do I know? So what I've done now, um, I've mixed up some XF55 tan here. Um, I've got it at about 50-50 with some um, leveling thinners. I tend to use, if I'm going to be going over the top with weathering and oils and stuff, I tend to steer away, away from the softer thinners, if you like. Um, you know, like the the real colours and ordinary, you know, um, Vallejo thinners and stuff. It, it's not very strong so the the, the leveling thinners is more solvent based and kind of bites harder so I tend to use this rather than the other thinners because it's it, it's you know if it was a camouflage over on, on top of a, a, a matte color base I just use ordinary thinners because it's it doesn't need to bite as hard as this if you, you almost want it to wear off a bit when you're doing your work afterwards but this is going to take a hammering with oils and all sorts so um I've got this XF55 tan, I've got it in the airbrush, the regulator set at around about 15 psi, nothing too high, so I'll just check, I've got a nice flow there. So what I can do now is, this is where your artistic license comes in, and there's a couple of ways you can do this, you can just sort of add faded areas like this, just to add a bit of interest, I hope you can see what I'm doing. And 
just add a bit of interest to the area here that you can see there if you look there you can see that it's kind of just added some differentiation to the to the area the other thing you can do which is what I often do is take a post-it note and with the um, with the glue side just sort of basically generally cover the note spray the post-it note and let the paint go over the edge of the post-it note and then you get that kind of effect on the planking and then do it again up here but say keep it away from that area so it's you know oh jesus these are cheap post-it notes they're not genuine post-it notes and they're absolute garbage look at that oh dear this is the, the pleasure of doing live video guys so what i'll do is i'll hold it this time and just again spray the post-it note let it go over and then perhaps a bit here Like that and then you can see we've got that different effect there now if you want to go and make that whole piece of wood say lighter there you could go over now the other way get it on the line nudge and then so you've got a whole lighter plank now so you can sort of do that all over your model and I know at the moment it looks a bit garish but come back in a minute and you'll be uh, I think you'll be quite surprised how how good it looks um, as I say as QDC says I am just a model like you I'm not an expert I'm not a professional I'm just showing you how I do things and hopefully from this you'll learn well you'll, you'll not learn but you'll pick up an idea or two the way I do theft things and then and then you might come up with um, ideas on top of this and then you'll start making your own videos and do the same but you can see there in this light it's a lot more garish than it is in reality so if you do this yourself this is like xf59 xf60 base color xf55 and um, you'll see it's nothing like as garish as it looks on there the difference is a lot more subtle so i'm going to carry on now and do this some more on every other piece of wood i've got and then um i'll come back and show you what i do next okay so we've done the work now with the, the lighter colors and you can see the effect of that here on the on the roof panel um, and on every other I've done it on every single part now and just sort of blown in bits of lighter areas now we need to add some darker areas and um, something I like to do just to add a bit of interest and you'll see this after the oils bit that it I think it looks quite effective anyway um, perhaps adding knots and if I show you first on the paper if I do a little test there what I do to do a knot is go in really close and just apply a touch of paint and pull away and then what you get is an intense spot of paint with a dark patch around it and if you look at a knot it's generally like intense with a dark area around it so um, I just sort of go in very close just get a dodge of paint and then pull away like that um, let's see if I can do it on the camera for you right you should be able to see this let's come and focus on it just go in and then pull away Dark. And then pull away. Okay, and you can do that like a random pattern everywhere. Now, in these days, in 1917, I don't think they would have used wood with knots in for vehicle manufacture. Uh, I used to have an old 1912 house, and people I bought it off had had the sash windows removed and had um, aluminium double glazing fitted, which was gross. So I had some wooden sash windows made and the carpenter that made them, it was interesting, he said, do you know mate, he said the wood I'm making these windows out of, in 1912 when this house was built, they probably wouldn't have used this on the fire because it would have burnt too quickly. They would have used better quality wood than we have available today to burn in 1912. So yeah, think about that when you're making these models. So right, I've got this um, on here, we'll do the same again. Again, mask it, spraying the, um, we get this darker effect now now yes it's garish yes it's out of scale but I haven't finished yet so when you see this with the oils on this is remember this is all about laying down a base coat 
these post-it notes really are an absolute dire crap of the stationary world. I think they're made by a company called Q Connect. Oh no. No, they're not, they're something else. But um no, dire. So uh There we go, and you can see the, the garish look of that just a bit here. So I've actually got a varied tone there, which is, and as I say, remember, this is just a base for what is to come. Okay, so I'll carry on doing that. Right, so I've got all this all painted up now. Um, you can see there we've got the the effect of the knots and the different coloured wood, the lights and the darks and everything. And um, there you go. And uh, now I'm going to do the final sort of wood effect. Now, as I've said before, please bear in mind when I do this wood, I'm doing it my way. I'm no professional, I'm not an expert. This is not how to do it. This is how I do it. Because I see some people do beautiful, beautiful wood effects and they get a beautiful finish with the wood grain. But in my opinion, it's over scale. Um, if you look at a chopping board, if you look at a chopping board that's say, I don't know, A4 size, yeah, like the size of this white piece of paper. Um, this white piece of paper is 30 centimeters long, okay? So in 30 second scale, if you imagine this was a chopping board, and you had some wood grain on it. In 30 second scale, that chopping bore would be less than a centimeter in this dimension. And probably about six millimeters in this dimension. So do you actually think you would see the wood grain in that scale on a chopping board? Probably not. So what we're trying to achieve, in my opinion, is some tonal changes on the surface to make them look like a sheet of wood or a piece of wood and if this was plywood like on this cockpit floor I don't do any of the lines the fading the masking with the um, post-it notes I only do that when I'm planking and also with the engraving where I grave it with the saw blade as you saw earlier I don't do that if it's plywood so what you're going to see here is how I get the effect that I'm looking for with wood planking on a vehicle kit. How I get the effect on um, aircraft, such as in a, a Junkers 88 bomb aimer's bed, it lays on a piece of wood with like a, a mattress type thing. That's a completely different story. This is all about vehicles, wood planking. Okay, or World, One Air, World War One aircraft wood planking if it exists. I think it does on the Felix there, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing here. So let's just concentrate on one piece of this. Um, I've masked off this roof here because this is, would be khaki inside. Um, the wood planking here. And I'm led to believe that the, all of the inside of the ambulance will be painted white. So what I intend to do is leave the, the roof like a wood colour. I don't know about the floor. We'll see where we go. Now what I use, I've got some raw umber and some yellow ochre oil paint. I need to get myself some burnt sienna. I might go and get some tomorrow. And what I've done, I've decanted it onto a piece of cardboard. Two reasons for this. One is you can throw the cardboard away at the end of the day because it doesn't smell that good. Two, um, it's soaking the oils out. And you can see here, around this yellow, the oil is soaking into the cardboard. There wasn't so much oil with the brown. You can see the oil soaking away. That helps it dry faster and it makes it easier to work with. It's more like um, like a paste rather than like a thinned paint, if you like. So what I'm gonna do, I've got these two brushes. Now this one here is cut off and absolutely knackered. This is a stubbly old brush. And this one here is, a, is just a small knackered brush. And I keep these brushes separate so I don't use them with acrylics. I only use these brushes with oils. So I'm just gonna take some of the dark brown paint on the brush here. And then I'm just going to literally brush it on like this, just to get it on there. Okay, so we've got that on there now in a random pattern. And then I can take this short brush and start to work it around.
So I'm just basically working it into the paint that's under there. Be careful not to lift the mask and take too much. It's not the end of the road if you do, because you just get some um, odorless thinners and clean it all off. But you can see that this paint is spreading really, really well. And this is also giving you, yet again, more tonality. Now, if you follow what I say on eBay or, or on eBay, on YouTube or what I write, um, I've actually been following a guy, Harry Houdini's Models. I think that's his channel. Harry Houdini's name is anyway. And um, he's been doing a build of a Wingnut Wings had some Brandenburg and he's doing the wood in there and one of his comments in there was about how the the color of the wood is different on seaplanes than it is on land-based aircraft so I asked the question I don't really understand why does everybody in their World War I aircraft why does everybody paint their wood so dark and it hadn't dawned on me apparently um, when the wood is exposed, exposed to salt air and seawater and stuff, the colour darkens. And I'm thinking, I don't get this, I don't get that at all. So he's got a, um, a professional guy he knows as a friend of his, that local bar or whatever, I don't know. So he's got a guy that he knows that tells him that the wood colour in the sea on World War aircraft would have been darker. And you know what, I went out tonight to throw the ball around with the dog and I've got an old wooden bench in the garden which has seen better days and I've pressure washed it. I'm thinking I'll give it one more coat of stain and might get another couple of years out of it. And I noticed that the wood that that bench, that um, seat was made out of is kind of gone very, very dark. Just like people depict their World War I aircraft wood. So now I've got a living example in my garden that will show me what I need to do and try and match the colour. That's going to be really hard because it's almost like a, a brownie grey colour. Like I can't really put my finger on what colour it is. It's, um, I'll have to get out there tomorrow if it's dry and see if I can match it. But anyway, I'm waffling. Now, at that stage there, if you wanted a dark wood finish, I don't think you can argue that, that is not depicting a dark wood finish. Okay, I can see some scratches in it, so that's my fault for going a bit mad when I was doing the um, the scratching. Because it was a curved surface, it was quite difficult. But I think we can agree that looks like a pretty good finish. Yeah. So I'm gonna get a paper towel. I'm just gonna start wiping and removing some. And if you look at that. No, so I always go in with the wood grain, never across it. Same effect, only lighter. Now you can see, earlier on I did those knots, and you can see now they're behind the, the wood. There's the dark patches there, there's the light patches there. And you can see that that is now a pretty authentic wood finish. Now the beauty of oils is, you can leave that now for a day and change your mind. You might want to get it lighter. So you might want to put some odorless thinners on a cloth and just wipe it in certain areas. You might want to get your brush and start rubbing again and adding some darker areas in there. Just like that. Like you see, you can add a darker area there and then lightly go over it and fade it out. This is how I do wood, guys. And I think it's pretty effective. Now... The error here is these scratches in the middle. If this was on the side of an aircraft or something, I would sort that out. Or probably even the cockpit sides, I would sort it out. But this is the roof, and the way we're going to see it is basically, where's my camera gone? The way you're going to be looking at it is like that. Let's get up something. It's like that. So you're not going to see those scratches anyway. But if this was anything else, I would sort them out. So if anything, you can take from that. Be careful when you're doing your wood draining not to go too mad with the scratches. Now let's do this floor. Once again, I'll get some of the dark. I know what you're thinking. Why has he got the light stuff there if he's not gonna use it? Well, I am. So we've got that on there now. I'm just gonna rub it around. 
Be careful not to get any massive build up in the corners or anything. But then, this is the beauty of using oil paints. I know I hear that people are scared of them. Um, I can't think for the life of me why, because they are the most usable, workable paint you could possibly use. I mean, I could show you, but I'm not. <laughs> um, you could basically take a rag now, so it could odorless thinners, and remove all of this and start again. You could remove this easily and start again. And um, yeah, there's, there's a guy out there, Gary, if you're watching. I know you're watching because you watch all of my videos and comment. Thank you very much. You're one of the only people who do. Um, I know you've got a fear of this. And really, you should have a go because your fears are completely and utterly unfounded. This is easy. Easy to do. And there we go. Wiping it with a cloth. And there's our wood grain on the floor. Okay. And then once again, if you want to play with it a bit, put some darker area in there. Let's get some of that yellow. Put it there. Some more there. And then just rub it out. I mean, you know, you can do whatever you want. Now, another little clue, another clue, another little tip that works very well. If you now want to give this a, I'm just going to go in here with some dark to give it some effect. Now look at that. Now I put the dark in there. Now I can work that out. And it gives it a kind of weathered, worn look, like perhaps the wood was darker and now it's where feet have been. It's worn it in. Yeah, this, this, wood effect is really really easy sorry what was I saying I got sidetracked I forget this is what happens old when you get old guys you forget stuff you start talking about something and you get sidetracked by I don't know an airplane goes over or you spot a pretty girl or somewhere along those lines gone everything you were talking about is gone there you go, so, and if I want to, if I really want to lighten that back, well that's what I was talking about, if you want to, if you want to go for the varnish polish look, go over it with, um, X23, I think it is, it was X23, clear yellow, X24, clear yellow, thin it, sort of 80% thinner, 20% paint, very lightly go over it, it gives it a kind of, it, it brings out the, the colour, almost like a pine colour, and um, it kind of um, just brings it to life, really. Um, but if you're after that dull, sort of, you know, woodshed, untreated, sort of unloved timber effect, then don't do that because it, may, it does give it that, that loved effect. And if you really want to bring it out, perhaps go with, um, perhaps go with some... Uh, clear orange which I think is x25 but anyway there we have it and like I say you could just knock it back with a bit of cloth add some more whatever really really forgiving really really easy to do and I think you'll agree yeah that that looks like wood yeah right so that's all that woodwork done um you can see there the cardboard with all the oil soaked into it, that's what I meant. And it makes it drier so you can you can work with it. Um, <clears throat> you can see here, I, I can show you two different finishes now as well. There's the floor. So that's the floor where you've got the yellow and the lighter brown and the darker brown and the wood knots and everything. Now on this bulkhead here, all I've done is accentuate. I did some lighter patches on top of the um, XF59 but I've accentuated the oil and really really gone mad into the grain so you can see here you can get more of a, a used worn wood look so if it was like an old railway car an old shed or something more appropriate 
as I say, with this, it's all going to be um, covered in paint. So um, I think the inside of the cab would have been painted. Been painted. And you can see it on that on that piece there as well. I mean, that, this was just plain plastic. This all this down here. So um, yeah, the the scraping up with the uh, razor saw blade, and then working with different bits of oils in different areas, and you can get in a, this with cotton buds and work it into certain areas and take it out of certain areas. And uh, yeah, I, I like the effect. I think it's pretty good. Um, you may not agree, but uh, you may think it's lovely. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and as I say, if I wanted to give this a proper varnished, sort of well looked after, loved look, like on a, a yacht deck or something, then I would now go over it with some yellow, well not now, but leave it for sort of 24, 36 hours, and go over it with some um, clear yellow Tamiya. And that would seal it in, give it a bit of a sheen, and sort of bring out the, the wood. If you look at my Fokker's Ride Plane build, you'll see what I've done on there. So, um, yeah, we'll call that a wrap for this part. Um, and I was going to do it in one bit, but I'm not now. So, um, this is part one. Part two will take us all the way up to the finished model, I think. And uh, onto paint. Alright, so thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you don't like what you see, dislike and tell me why. If you think I need to make some changes, then um, then you know just suggest them. I'm uh, I'm open to all criticisms, positive and negative. Sorry, open to all comments, positive and negative. So yeah, I look forward to hearing from you all. Happy modelling, and um, hope you've enjoyed this. Bye for now.